Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Arjawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, on the demise of Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. His Majesty the King offered sincere condolences to the Emir of Kuwait and the Honorable Al Sabah family, recalling the qualities and contributions of late Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. In serving Kuwait, His Majesty prays to Allah the Almighty to bless the late Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah with the mercy and rest his soul in peace. He also prayed to Allah Almighty to bless the Emir of Kuwait and the Honorable Al Sabah family with patience and consolation. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was at the forefront to receive Jordan's monarch, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, accompanied by the Jordanian Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II, and His Royal Highness Hashim bin Abdullah II, upon arrival at Sakhir Air Base for a visit to the kingdom. Also present were His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. The Jordanian monarch was accompanied by the Prime Minister, Dr. Bishr Al Khasauna, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate Affairs, Ayman Al Safadi, the Policy Advisor to the Jordanian monarch, Haifa Al Khresha, as well as the Jordanian Ambassador to Bahrain, Rami Al Adwan. An official reception ceremony was held for the Jordanian monarch and his accompanying delegation. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held talks with Jordan's monarch, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan, Prince Hussein bin Abdullah II, and His Royal Highness Prince Hashim bin Abdullah II at Sakhir Palace. His Majesty the King welcomed the Jordanian monarch, affirming the distinguished historic relations between the two countries and the continuous cooperation in all fields, praising the honorable stances of Jordan towards Bahrain. His Majesty the King valued the important role of Jordan in supporting, in supporting the Arab and Islamic causes, including the Palestinian cause, pushing joint Arab action and contributing to strengthening the regional and international security and stability. For his part, the Jordanian monarch expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm hospitality and welcome, affirming Jordan's pride in the depth of the relations between the two countries. The two sides reviewed the strong fraternal relations and various aspects of joint cooperation, coordination and means of promoting them. The two sides also discussed the developments in the Middle East region in addition to measures related to combating the novel coronavirus COVID-19. They also discussed the importance of continuing coordination and cooperation between the two brotherly countries on various issues.
The two leaders also discussed several issues to achieve the interest and aspirations of the Arab nation. The meeting was attended by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. From the Jordanian side, the attendees included the Prime Minister, Dr. Bishr Al Khasawna, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate Affairs, Ayman Al Safadi, the Policy Advisor to the Jordanian Monarch, Haifa Al Khraisha, as well as the Jordanian Ambassador to Bahrain, Rami Al Adwan. Military cooperation between Jordan and Bahrain is promoted through the visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, which is reflected in the many stances that the two countries have taken through the years. Distinguished historic relations link the Bahraini and the Jordanian kingdoms. Brotherly, fraternal fondness have always brought together His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, which has been reflected in the relations between the two countries and their peoples. The military relations between the two countries witness remarkable developments as the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Jordanian Kingdom share the High Bahraini Jordanian Military Cooperation Committee, which aims to enhance fraternal cooperation and coordination in all fields. During military meetings, the two countries always stress their keenness to develop bilateral relations in all fields, especially in military and defense cooperation, with the aim of strengthening the existing military cooperation between the two brotherly countries and developing a number of joint military projects between the two sides. Bahrain have always supported the Jordanian Kingdom. The Kingdom affirmed its support by participating in international efforts to eradicate terrorism after the arrival of the Royal Bahraini Air Force planes in Jordan, within the framework of the Joint Bilateral Defense Cooperation, which reflects Bahrain's support and standing with Jordan in its measures to eradicate terrorism and defeat all its forms. The two countries have always met in joint drills that are held in the region, such as the Eager Lion Drill, which was organized by Jordan in cooperation with the United States of America. The two countries have also met during the North Thunder Drill that was held in Saudi Arabia, and the Saif al Arab Drill in Egypt, and other joint drills that assert the unity of approaches and visions that the leaderships of the two brotherly countries lead within the framework of their fraternal relationship and the framework of joint Arab relations.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Emir of the State of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, over the passing of Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister sent two similar cables to the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, and to the Prime Minister of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister today chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. Starting the meeting, the cabinet lauded the royal directives mandating the relevant authorities within Bahrain to compensate Bahraini seafarers affected by the actions taken by the Qatari authorities. In this regard, the cabinet affirmed that the concerned authorities will undertake the assessment of the damages and the disbursement of compensations. The cabinet emphasized the importance of restoring the accepted norms which have been observed by successive generations, whereby Qatar permits Bahraini seafarers to fish in Qatari waters, and in return Bahrain permits Qatari seafarers to fish in Bahraini waters until Bahrain-Saudi borders. In line with the Council of Representatives' position in this regard, which represents the perspective of the kingdom's citizens, the cabinet highlighted the importance of direct bilateral negotiations with Qatar to reach agreement on continuing to allow fishermen and seafarers of both countries to practice their activities in accordance with historical norms and in a manner that benefits the citizens of both countries and enhances Gulf cooperation. The cabinet emphasized the importance of His Majesty the King's royal address on the occasion of the kingdom's national day celebrations and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne, marking the kingdom's continued development in line with the aspirations of Bahrain's citizens. In this regard, the cabinet extended gratitude to the kingdom's citizens, residents and the international community on receiving their best wishes. The cabinet commended His Majesty the King's announcement of the national vaccination campaign and its launch with His Majesty the King receiving the vaccination. In this context, the Cabinet extended congratulations to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on His Majesty the King's Royal Order to create the Prince Salman bin Hamad Medal for Medical Merit, which reflects royal appreciation of His Royal Highness's efforts and pride in the efforts of the Kingdom's medical professionals. The Cabinet welcomed the visit of the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein, accompanied by the Crown Prince of Jordan. His Royal Highness Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II. In this regard, the cabinet noted the strength of the bilateral relations and the importance of further strengthening ties across various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then reiterated his importance of continuing to follow and observe all COVID 19 precautionary measures, adding that although infection rates are lower than previously, the virus remains present and poses a risk to the community. Therefore, Complacency must be avoided in order to protect the community in the upcoming period. In this context, the Cabinet reviewed the latest developments on the new strain of COVID-19 virus. Available medical and scientific reports indicate that this strain responds to the current vaccines and the Cabinet reiterated the importance of closely monitoring the developments related to this new strain and take the necessary measures. The Cabinet praised the public response of those registering to be vaccinated, which has already reached more than 12,000 individuals. In this regard, the Cabinet urged the public to continue to register for the vaccination to protect oneself and the community and to ensure the success of the Kingdom's national comprehensive COVID-19 response. The Cabinet welcomed the United States' decision to designate Saraya al-Mukhtar as a global terrorist organization, which threatened the security of the Kingdom and the countries globally. The cabinet praised the continued support of the United States in confronting terrorist organizations and fighting extremism. Furthermore, the cabinet welcomed the announcement by the Yemeni parties represented by the legitimate government and the Southern Transitional Council of the implementation of the Riyadh Agreement and the formation of an inclusive government. In this regard, the cabinet acknowledged the sincere efforts made by Saudi Arabia under the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Kingdom's commitment to a stable and prosperous Yemen. 
The cabinet concluded by welcoming the formal removal of Sudan from the list of state sponsors of terrorism, expressing its hope that this step would strengthen Sudan's role within the Middle East region and internationally. A number of memorandums were discussed during the meeting. The cabinet outlined the following outcomes. First, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum from the government's executive committee regarding the 2019-2022 government priorities framework GPF 3.0 including new recommended programs introduced within its third edition. 13 programs of 36 have already been completed and the remaining programs are on schedule. 80 new programs have been added in the updated framework GP 3.1 in line with the 2019 to 2022 government program goals and in accordance with the next phase of the kingdom's development. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Leg Legislative Affairs on the implementation of the ruling issued by the Constitutional Court on the Parliamentary Investigation Committee. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance on the rollout of electronic payments for government services to replace cash transactions and accelerate the digital transformation of the government financial operations. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance on the establishment of an advanced artificial intelligence educational laboratory at the University of Bahrain to further enhance the education and development. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following issues and topics. A memorandum from the Ministry of Finance and National Economy regarding the Kingdom's third quarterly economic report of 2020. A number of important economic indicators witnessed positive growth in the same period, reflecting favorably on the comprehensive national response to COVID-19, managing the economic impact, and further strengthening the recovery of the national economy. The Coast Guard began to receive the requests of sailors who have been arrested in Qatar in order to limit the damages they have suffered as a result of hostile measures and the systematic Qatari targeting of the lives and livelihood of Bahraini sailors. The commander of the Coast Guard, Major General Ala Siadi, stated that this step comes within the framework of coordination to take the necessary legal measures that will preserve the rights of seafarers while they have suffered damage as a result of arrest and damaging their boats. As a result of being detained in Qatar for long periods or colliding with them directly by the Qatari Coast Guards and National Border Security Patrols. He pointed out that within the framework of the continuous Qatari targeting of Bahraini sailors, Qatar remains holding 47 fishing boats from Bahrain to date after the Qatari patrols had detained 650 boats and 2,153 people with the official Bahraini identity during the last 10 years. The national campaign for vaccination against the coronavirus in Bahrain has witnessed since its inception a remarkable demand by citizens and residents to take the coronavirus vaccination. The registration platform for the coronavirus vaccine has witnessed a large turnout through the website of the Ministry of Health as a vaccination is free and everyone who is over 18 years can register to take it. The remarkable turnout by citizens and residents of Bahrain to take the vaccine with the launch of the national vaccination campaign indicates the responsible awareness of all and their keenness to preserve the health and safety of society. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 1,601 with 153 recoveries, 220 registered new cases and one death. 131 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 75 are contacts of active cases and 14 are travel related. The deceased was 83-year-old citizen. The Ministry of Health expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.